Good morning everyone. Today we are going to have some Hokkien Mee. We are walking along this HDB estate that actually has landed HDBs and to me it's a pretty rare thing to see. They're really nice and sort of cute and they plant all sorts of flowers, even trees that bear fruits around their compound. Oh my god, I didn't know eggs grew on trees. That's interesting. Anyway, we're actually walking to catch a bus and we're going to try out this spot called Geylang Lorong 29 Hokkien Mi. I've not tried this spot before, la, but I read about this online from a pretty well-known Singapore food blogger and pretty excited to try it out. However, that food blogger also mentioned that it is not the most consistent Hokkien Mee stall. La. So let's see if we get lucky today and get a good plate of Hokkien Mee. Try it together with us. Alright guys, we are in the shop right now. Sorry for not showing you the storefront. We tried to get permission from them to film the storefront and they say that, you know, uh, it's not convenient. La. Anyway, we ordered our Hokkien Mee. We ordered a small one, it's six dollars. The whole situation might be a little bit awkward because there's this man. Uh, we just like hovering around. <laughs> he kept coming to talk to us, so there might be some interruptions. I will do my best to to eat this plate of Hokkien Mee. I'm pretty excited to try, but the environment is a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe it's just today. Okay, while well, we are waiting for the Hokkien Mee to be served, a quick introduction to what Hokkien Mee is in Singapore. Singapore Hokkien Mee is also a stir-fried noodle dish. They use yellow noodles together with bihun, and then they stir-fry it, but they add a stock that is made out from prawns and pork ribs. So that's where the flavor comes from. Then they add on prawns. I think they also add on this, uh, oh, here comes the Hokkien okay. <laughs> They add on prawns, they add on squid, and the calamansi on the side. Oh, and this smells really good. I can smell it, the aroma of that prawn stock actually wafting up and you've got some pork lards over here some shives and some bean sprout it's right between wet and dry i know there are two variants some of them are wetter some of them are drier but this one feels like right in between where it's a little bit saucy mm. oh moderate amount okay not the most smoky you get that stock flavor for sure we need a seafood base you get an alkaline flavor, I think, from the noodles, but this is very common with uh, Singapore Hokkien Mee, and I think it's part of the flavor profile as well. I'm going to squeeze on some of that calamansi. Uh, bro, do you mind? Uh, let, uh, let me just tell you, okay. man. I thought you were in a while, yeah? Okay, good. Thanks, bro. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Yeah, I see. It's a very difficult to do it here. Anyway, I'm going to squeeze on that calamansi. I'm going to mix it up, get all that beautiful lime juice in. I mean, calamansi juice. Let's go. Mmm. Mmm. No, it has an aroma of that tang. It's saucy. I like the consistency of how it feels. It's very slurpable. I think this is a good balance. It's not too dry. It's definitely not wet. Every bit of that stock has turned into like a sauce base that holds the noodles. And I noticed they are also no bihun. I think if you want the bihun, you need to tell them it's bihun me. Bouncy, not much of a flavor though. I think this is like their typical grey prawn, la, the farm type of prawn. It's fresh. And now more for the noodles. Mm. Alkaline flavor might be a little bit strong after a while. It does taste of fly water taste. Oh guys, I forgot there's a sambal as well. Let's grab some of that sambal and put it onto the noodles, mix it up. Let's hope it elevates the flavor because I think it does need quite a bit of additional flavor on it. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> oh, the sambal helps a ton. It brings in the spiciness that even more umami, I think it's like probably a shrimp based sambal. There's tang. It's probably like dried shrimp sambal. Not exactly belachan. I don't think it's fermented. I'm not sure lah. You need to eat the sambal. If you don't eat the sambal, it gets one note real quick. With the sambal, it brings it a little notch. It gives it that kick, that tang, and the spiciness. Mmm. Mmm. Now, it's starting to turn into a good fried Hokkien.
Alright guys, uh, that's it for that Hokkien Mee. Actually, they have this pork satay that I wanted to try as well. But because the Indian man was just, you know, <laughs> I was a bit worried lah, because it's, you know, it's COVID and he's talking to us without a mask on and my food is around my table. So I'm sorry guys, uh, we didn't do the satay. Anyway, we're gonna bring you to a bakery that we found to be quite good. Like, it's actually not a Singaporean bakery, it's a Taiwan bakery that has a chain here. So we'll see if we can film there and show you some breads while we do the plate in time for Geylang Lorong 29 Hokkien Mee. This is a bakery called Wu Bao Chun. It's come from Taiwan. Yeah, mm. and they are very well known for their champion bread. Mm -hmm. One of them is a red wine Longan sourdough, mm -hmm. and the other is a lychee rose, rose sourdough as well. So these two breads, I think they have won a competition before. I think it's World Bread Baking Championship in 2010. Actually, quite knew about this store for quite a while, and she knew that they have a branch in Singapore. So when we came, we actually came by to try a few days back, and we came twice already. The yeah. bread is really good. So what we got here is this whole set is 10 bucks. It comes with a tea, we got a jasmine green tea and it also comes with a set of honey for your tea. By the way, this is really good honey, it's not a cheapskate honey. And a basket of bread right here. <laughs> oh, you can smell! Because it's toasted, you can smell the fragrance of... I think the lychee maybe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the this is a mix. Yeah, one type is the longa, one type is the lychee, so let's try it out. Okay, uh, because both bread look very similar, so I'm not sure which is which. We're gonna just kind of try it out. We could get the same one, but you can see mm. over here we have got all these dry longan or lychee, and then you've got some walnuts mm. on the side. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mine is definitely lychee. Mine is longan. Oh, yeah. The red one longan, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Allow me to talk about my lychee like, rose first. The lychee is sort of like a raisin now. I think it's infused with rose fragrance and flavor. And the bread, it's a sourdough but it's not exactly sour. In fact, I couldn't even taste any sourness. But it's got a really nice airy, chewy middle. And the top is a little bit crusty. So it's got a very nice extra contrast. Yeah. Mm. For my longan, the texture is like Wellen say, not very chewy and not very soft. And the longan, it has a very nice longan fragrance and the sweetness is modern sweetness and with a little bit wine taste. Mm. It is good lah. The bread is very good. The walnut, the nuttiness and the fragrance, the toastiness of the walnut and the crunch. It pairs really well with the soft chewy bread. And then have a sip of this. Amazing. The tea is also a proper quality tea lah. And the honey gives it a very nice sweetness. If you like it to be a little bit sweeter and not as bitter in the tea flavor, mm. put in the honey, really good quality honey, stir it up, and then you have a lively sweet jasmine green tea. <sighs> That's really good and really heartwarming. Now, aside from this set, <laughs> because we are really greedy and when we come across good food, like, yeah. We, we have very weak willpower lah when we come across good food. So we also bought some of their mini buns. Because we tried a few and they were really good as well. So here are a few. Uh, some of them we have tried, some of them we have not. We have got over here spring onion bun. Mm -hmm. The peanut butter bun, we have tried this, this is good. And this, it looks so beautiful, I just had to grab it. They call it the curry egg bun. So I'm guessing it's probably curry flavored, I'm not sure. There's this beautiful sunny side up with a sprinkle of parsley on top. With probably some olive oil and underneath it looks sort of like an English muffin. I'm not too sure. Mm. Alright, let's start off with the spring onion. I shall try this. <laughs> it's really soft and it smells so fragrant of spring onion and I think shallow oil is smell as well. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's go. It's so soft. Look at this. It's so soft. Very light bread, very airy. Nice chill. Surprisingly, flavor wise, it's a little bit mild. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, it slowly intensifies as you chew. The fragrance is really strong. Oh, this is good. This is good. Mm. Mm. You know, Taiwanese bread, I think, is similar to Japanese bread, right? They are softer, airier, bouncier in a way, and chewy. And this is that, together with spring onion fragrance. Wow. Let's try the next bread. The peanut bun and the inside is very special so let me tear over to show you guys what is inside. Oh, 
see that, see that melty thing. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, the filling inside is one layer of the peanut butter with a chunk of peanut bites and the middle. Middle is a sort of surprise. I think it's a mochi because it's thick, sticky white color. Yeah, it's most likely mochi, yeah, that's true. Power peanut mm. butter. With mm. peanut crumbs inside as well. Very nutty. And the peanut butter actually not only sweet, it's a bit salty. This is a really good peanut butter, probably house made. And I think the mochi cuts the peanut butter now because mm. the peanut butter is sweet, it's rich. It's like a condensed version of what you will get from supermarket stores, mm. but a way more refined version. And the mochi cuts it down. Mochi is lightly sweet as well. Mm. And the bread, fluffy. Soft. Nice chew. Airy. Yeah, it's basically very good. Like, when we had this, I was quite stumped to be honest. I was like, wow, what did you just it? I have not had a peanut butter bun that was balanced so well. Normally it's too peanut buttery. Mm. Last one. Yeah. The, the one. egg bun that looks really beautiful. Yeah, the look and cheat people one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, this, the curry bun. <laughs> I think uh, we're going to speed this one. I'm just going to take a bite in. I'll try to grab uh, the yolk as well. Mm. So let's go. <laughs> How do I eat? Oh no! Oh, oh. Mm. oh! Smart. There is like an indent in the bun. Mm. And this is where they stuff the potato curry. It's like Japanese potato curry. But the flavor is more Asian. It's more our curry style. And then on top, they have this sunny side up, which is sort of creamy yolk. And the bread, it's not a muffin, it's not chewy, it's soft, it's airy again. A very typical, I would say, Taiwanese slash Japanese type of bread. And the key point lies in the flavor of the curry potato. Again, a very beautiful looking bun with very simple but great flavors as well. Stop it anytime. time. Play time! time. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about Geylang Lorong 29. Mm. Uh, Hokkien Mee. <laughs> okay, sorry, jokes aside. Um, I think pretty decent Hokkien Mee. Wokke is present, it's moderate Wokke. And you could definitely taste the savory flavor of the stock. And I like the balance of the dryness and wetness of the Hokkien Mee. I think it's done pretty well. Together with the moist egg pieces, it makes the noodle really slurpable. Yeah. So I think that's very good. As for the flavor of the noodle, there's this underlying alkaline flavor like lye water. I'm guessing it comes from the yellow noodles and that becomes overpowering as the dish cools down. It's actually quite strong. I know Hokkien Mee generally has that taste, but normally it's not that strong. This is a bit overbearing to be honest. And the noodles as well, they are a tad mushier than expected. I think it's probably like slightly overcooked. You know generally Hokkien Mee, the noodles are soft but they are not like mushy. La. This is really bordering mushy. As for the ingredients, I think they are okayish, but definitely not great by Singapore standards. It's like the pork lard is not exactly very explosive in flavors. The prawn is bouncy but it has no flavor. The squid as well, very, very mousy flavor. When you pay six bucks for a small Hokkien Mee, I think it could be better la. Sambal is pretty good. It is the savior for the dish in my opinion. It elevates the noodle to a pretty good level due to the spiciness and the prawn-based umami. You definitely need to put in the sambal for this, this particular spot Hokkien Mee. It really makes it from Different. decent to pretty good, just by the sambal alone. <laughs> So with all that being considered, I would say if you put the sambal in, uh, this place will score an okay on a gourmet plate. But you must put the sambal in. You need to put lots of it. Then it scores an okay on a gourmet plate. Which means it is some good quality Hokkien Mee right there. Um, if you are nearby, I think you can definitely try it out. If you are nearby. But I think maybe we didn't have that good of an experience. There were people disturbing us. And the service there is not exactly the best. Lah. So do bear that in mind. Yep. Let's talk about Wubao Zhu very quickly. Absolutely great bread. The champion breads are really good. I think you have them here, it's way better. We tried buying it home and they have these instructions for you to toast it yourself or steam it yourself. But somehow it's not as good as them to eat here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so drop by, have their champion bread set with the tea, it's really good. And then the mini buns, you can just try them as they are. All three that we try are good. And then there are two others which I would recommend. One is the sausage bun. Really small bun, but they use really good quality German sausage. And the other is the mentaiko bun. That is also really good. 
I really like this place, uh, even though it's a, it's not their original store, it's a brunch, but I think it, it deserves easily a half a pay on the go pay. This is some really high quality bakery buns right there. Absolutely recommend it if you're in Singapore and you have not tried the one in Taiwan, just like us. Yeah, drop by like it's really good. The place is quite chill as well. They've got nice Chinese music playing behind. You know, you can just sit here and chill. There's aircon, key point. Singapore is really hot. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it for our food vlog for the week. Um, I apologize if it's a little bit haphazard because things didn't quite go as planned. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you're yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Tune in again in the next episode. We will be going to my childhood favorite hawker yep. center. Yep. See you.